Next is dealing with columns and walls. So to draw columns and walls, um, you look at the right hand side again. So this this tool here is for columns. If you move the cursor, it tells you the this tool is here for walls. So the shape also represents that. So double click again on column. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, now again, you need to define the column properties. So before you obviously draw it, always the case, always double click, define properties and draw it. So starting first is obviously concrete strengths. What's the concrete strengths for your column? Generally, concrete strengths for columns are more or same as a slab, but they're not obviously lower than slabs. The height, what's the height? Because these two component is going to help the RAM to calculate the column stiffness, which is going to help your slab. That's why it's asking for this information. Uh, support is it below or above? So obviously support is going to be below. Later I'll explain how to draw columns above if you have column under and over at same location. Then you're looking at widths and depths. So this is the dimension of column, right? So here you can obviously give them um, dimension if you know the dimension already or just give a dimension you can modify later on say 600 by 300 the angle represents the rotation zero angle means that your column is a beautiful horizontal column and 90 means like a vertical column uh, but in this case see your columns are a bit actually skewed so you need to find the angle uh, we don't know the angle again so you need to try the error or at least when you check in, in AutoCAD file see how much your plan is rotated how much is skewed um, i think on this job is 15 degrees but let's use 15 and we'll see okay the next one is understanding the bend this bending stiffness factor what is that when you're designing a slab you want to consider some part of column or vertical elements like column stiffness helping your slab generally we don't take the full stiffness because it will be very less conservative we only take portion of the column stiffness to help uh, in design for slabs and that is 20% 0.2 so remember when you're checking for deflection and strength which is bending you use this less stiffness 0.2 but when you're checking for shear or punching shear bending shear either of them you must use full stiffness like one why because when the column stiffness is full the bigger moment comes into the column so that means that it will work harder in punching right so you want to see the, the the critical scenario the, the worst scenario right so that's why you use the factor of one when you're checking for shear uh, so that means you need to rerun this model or save as it as a another model and check it for shear so and use the factor of one Again, unfortunately, some engineers don't even do that. They just use 0.2 and um, don't even check check for shear with that factor too. But technically, you should use factor of one stiffness when you check for shear. The bottom four is the properties that you need to define for your column. To be honest, we have a really good slide. I would like to refer to it. Here it is. So these four properties is also explained by simple wording here. Um, when you use Rolo at far end, obviously column has two ends. The end that connects to the slab, the other end that connects to, I don't know, to a level below. So when you use Rolo at far end, means that the connection at the other end is a pin connection, just as it says. That means no horizontal shear will go to the column. Fixed near means the connection to the slab um, is a rigid connection so it will absorb moment otherwise it's a pin connection so in case of rc concrete we always tick this on the fixed near one because if you don't tick this on this 200 percent is useless but if you untick it then this becomes a pin connection so this doesn't matter what value you give because you took it as a pin connection anyway Fix far again the other end at the column. We always take some moment in the other end, so that's why we tick this on as well. And you remember that when, yeah, as you may remember, uh, the stiffness of a connection 
it relates on the what type of rigidity you have at two ends of column so uh, that's why you need to define this these uh, properties as fixed and the last one is is it a compressible column or non-compressible difference is that ram even calculates the column shortening for you so if this is on it will tell you how much actually column has shortened and as a result uh, the slab has you know even come down you know what i mean so it tells you say a few mils the column has shortened so the whole slab is also you know moved down as a result of that so that's all it is these properties but in summary i will leave it as by default the only parameter i change is 0.2 that i explained why then you press ok and now you need to click at the exactly the centroid of the column to draw the column that's how it works so if you see here in my cat file i don't have any you know point for the centroid of column because there wasn't anything drawn in the cat so here your life might be a little bit difficult because you don't know and you just need to visually okay i think roughly here is the center i'll do it there right you know you just visually put it oh look it's not gonna be very bad because at the end of the day it's not gonna be so much off from the actual location plus you can move it around by snapping to the corner of the column uh, but I suggest having like some sort of point drawn in AutoCAD at the centroid makes your life easier when you're drawing the columns in RAM console. Okay, clearly this column is not the actual size of the column we have in that location. So what do you do? Right click again, selection properties to give the right size. But obviously before that we need to know what's the size of our column, right? So there's a dimension tool here. Uh, as you can see, just click on it. And click at two ends of your column to come up with the dimension. That one is 1.66 and the other end is 0.2. So 1660 and 200. So that's the dimension of your column. So once we just go back again to the properties, selection properties, and instead of 600, you need to have 1660 and this one is 200. So as you can see, the, it's a little bit uh, not really uh, matching the column angle. And I think maybe we can make it a bit, maybe 14 degree. Yeah, almost. Uh, so if I want to slightly move it, maybe the exact answer is 14 and a half, but obviously it's not important. Just, just... Uh, little bit difference i think yeah, the exact answer is 14 and a half but for us that's good enough uh, even 14 or 15 is good enough but the exact answer is 14 and a half okay see that's exactly how we draw the column so what we do we repeat the same thing for all the other columns it's a bit annoying isn't it so you don't have to do it actually because i created a model which has all the columns so use use this command this command here to deselect all the tools at the top and then double click on the column double click delete yeah so that's the thing and also remember if you draw two columns at the same location the ram will give you a warning so you will be able to notice there's something wrong with it okay so we pretty much repeat this for all the columns here however you may ask okay what about this guy here which is quite long do i treat this as a column or wall what about this one do i treat this as a column or wall well i would say that these two cases are going to be are going to be wall why is that remember ram treats column differently from wall what does that mean ram connects column to slab in only one single node so that means that the slab is going to start deflecting only from center of column start deflecting down because it's only connected it's imagine like this it's treats column only supporting the slab at the center of it that's it 
But in case of wall is different. It connects the slab mesh to wall in multiple points. So treats wall as multiple supports. When you have a like a blade column like this, it's not supporting the slab only at that center. It's only supporting it at this edge and the other edge. So it makes sense to have multiple nodes. So that's why you need to treat it as a wall. I want to show you a very good example that I've actually done. Here it is. I want you to look at this one at the right. See this one, this is modeled as a column. See, the slab mesh is only connected to that column at the center of it. However, the left hand side is modeled as a wall and the slab mesh is connected to the wall at multiple points. So if you do this using this model, the right hand side, you will see some deflection exactly at the bottom corner doesn't make sense it's a column I shouldn't have any deflection at this end it's just because it's treating only supporting it at the center so it start deflecting like from the center of column so it's not a good practice you will get like much bigger deflections but this left hand side will give you a better judgments of deflections as a rule of thumb if the ratio is one, bigger than one to four one direction with respect to another you would definitely should go with wall modeling so that explains it. So we need to model these ones as a wall.